Well hello there engineers and welcome to this video for Prompt Geek. In today's video I'm going to show you the secrets to creating amazing t-shirt designs using AI and Stable Diffusion SDXL. I'm not promising that you'll make lots and lots of money, but I am promising you that by the end of this video, you're going to be able to create amazing designs super fast so that you can create your very own t-shirt or merchandise store just like this. So with all of that out the way, I'm going to get into it. This video is for designers that are new to AI, wanting to harness SDXL in their workflow. It is of course also for those pros among you who have been using GUIs like Automatic 11.11 so far. We are going to actually be using Focus, which is a great web UI for SDXL. The first question is, of course, why would you choose to use SDXL instead of MidJourney? The first reason is that SDXL and Stable Diffusion in general is free to use. If you have a decent enough GPU, you can create them on your desktop without having to pay for an additional service, which is really important if you're trying to make a profit. We're going to be using Focus primarily during this video, but I will also be sharing the full prompts in order for the automatic 11.11 users out there to be able to follow along. However, I am going to say this. It's important to use the right tools for a job. For this kind of application, Focus is actually a much better option. And the reason is quite simple. It makes prompting incredibly easy. For the newcomers to AI, Focus is the easiest way to get into it. It's very simple to install, whereas Automatic 11.11 has a number of steps that you have to go through and the number of prerequisites you have to download. With Focus, you can do it in just three steps. And I have got a video that shows you the full process. If you're happy to explore your way around or watch that video later, I will put the link down in the description to this actual application. And all you have to do is scroll down to where it says Windows and download it there. It will automatically install the STXL models for you as well. For those of you new to AI generated art with these kind of applications, you have to download the actual AI models separately in order for you to be able to create images. Well, this application will download the main ones for you so you can get creating straight away. Once you've installed Focus, you'll find that the interface is deceptively simple. You have just a big box here where the image will generate, a box to enter the prompt into, and then a generate button. This of course would be fine just for a simple image, let's say a warrior monk in a dark monastery for example. You'd hit the generate button and you'll get whatever you're given. This experience is probably closest to what you would get with Mid Journey. The great thing about Stable Diffusion XL and using specifically this app Focus is that it will actually generate a really decent image in not too long a time, even on graphics cards with as little as 4 gigabytes of VRAM. Obviously, the more powerful your GPU, the faster it will generate these images. You see the results look very cinematic, they look very effective and very mid-journey-esque, but maybe a little bit more realistic. So you can see how using SDX Allen Focus can really speed up your process. Normally in Automatic 11.11, this prompt here would actually have a lot more to it in order to get a result anywhere near this. The way the Focus is able to do that is through what's happening in the back end of the software. And you can actually get to all of these wonderful SDXL options by clicking on this advanced tab here. And here you'll now be able to change your settings so we can look and change the aspect ratio of the image. We can change the number of images that it's going to generate in one go. And then here we can enter a negative prompt. An example of that would be we don't want any red in the image, for example. So if we typed here red and then regenerated this, it would avoid red being in the image. And of course, that can be the same for people and objects. You can prompt those out of your generations. You also have the performance mode right now. I've got it set to speed, but if you set it to quality, that increases the sampling steps of the model, then you'll get a better quality result as well, but it is slower to create. The next tab here is the style one. This one's going to come in very useful for your t-shirt designs. Here you've got lots of different styles that you can apply to your image. So normally, if I wanted to, for example, create a cyberpunk image, I would have to write a long prompt 
and it'll be a warrior monk in a dark monastery in a cyberpunk city wearing neon clothing, that kind of prompting. However, the style tab here that lets you automatically add on those additional keywords to get the results in the image you want. Then the final one here is advanced. This is where we're going to be setting up a LoRa, effectively an add-on model. And what it does is you can use it to help refine your image to create a specific style or a subject. And the LoRa is used in conjunction with your base model. In order for us to be able to create t-shirt designs, we are going to be using a specific LoRa, which we can find over on Civit AI and show you where it is and how to install it now. Civit AI is the best resource that you will have as an AI artist and prompt engineer. Over on Civit AI, you can find hundreds, probably now thousands of different models and LoRa's that you're able to actually use inside of Stable Diffusion. You see here that you've featured models. You can see other people's images along with the prompts that they've used to create those images. There's even tutorials here on how to get certain effects or to create certain images. If you want to be able to create realistic images, for example, you've got checkpoints or models as we call them, like Reality's Edge XL to be able to get photo realistic images. Base models are also actually known as checkpoints. I do use the term interchangeably today. We're actually going to be looking at the LoRa that we want to use. I've put the link in the description down below. That LoRa is called T-Shirt Designs Vector Style Stickers Pod. And as you can see here, it will help us get some really good T-Shirt style images. To download this LoRa, you just come along here to download. You're going to click that. You're then going to want to find the root folder of your Focus application. So wherever it is you installed it, you want to go into the Focus folder. You want to go to Models and into LoRa's. And then you want to save it there. I've already installed it, but you want to save it in here. You'll also want to take note of any trigger words the LoRa may have. Some don't have trigger words, others do require you to use these words in your prompt. So this one here is T-shirt design or sticker. So keep that one in mind. We go back into our advanced tab. We want to go to where it says LoRa's at the bottom there, refresh all files. Then when we click on our LoRa, we want to leave the top one as it is. This is an offset, leave it where it is. The one below it though, we're going to click on that. We're going to go to last. This is the LoRa that we just downloaded. We want to set the weight of this up to one. The weight is basically how much the LoRa will impact the image. And now what we want to do is we're going to prompt our first t-shirt design. So let's go to the style. We don't want it to be a cinematic looking image. We want it to be artistic and cartoony. So we could choose any of them that sound like they will create a cartoon style image. So we could go with cell shaded art, then type in here a new design idea. And the prompt I'm going to use is graphical t-shirt design. Remember t-shirt design is the keyword we have to use, the trigger word of a zombie rock star icon, white background, white space around the design. I'm prompting it here by saying white background to make sure that the background is clear because we're going to want to be able to edit the background out. Now, actually, sometimes you may want to type in gray background here instead because if it's white and you have white in the actual design itself, it could make selecting it a little bit tricky. So I'm going to change that to gray background right now. Before we generate, we're going to want to change that back to an appropriate size. At the moment, I've got that set up like it's a cinematic image. That won't work for a logo or icon design. This LoRa does operate better at around 896 by 1088. So do make sure to check what you have selected in the aspect ratio. I'm still leaving it with speed, but if you're happy with your prompt, you've tested it, you might want to go with quality to generate to get the best result. So let's just hit generate now. And our first t-shirt designs are ready for us. In literally just a couple of minutes, we've created two new designs that we can use on our t-shirts with very little effort. We've got our rock star zombie with the great background. And as you can see, this can make it really easy for us to remove the background in Photoshop or Photopea or GIMP, whichever photo software you're using. And then we can export it as a PNG 
and put it on a t-shirt or on a poster or some sort of merchandise of some sort. And all of this was done with just this one simple prompt right here. The power of focus is that it makes it super easy for us to do that, but here's where it really gets really effective. Let's go ahead and change the style of this from cell shaded art. Let's go and turn this into adorable kawaii. Now we might need to put in here cute as a keyword just to get it to move away from the sort of horror look. And then we can just press generate and see what we get. And there we go. Some cute, I mean, I don't know, they're not really that cute, but they do certainly have that kawaii style to them. There are zombies, rock stars. You see there, this one particularly looks fantastic. And all you have to do is change the style that you select, generate again, and you'll get a very different result using just the same prompt. And here are a couple of examples that I just generated for you as well. Just in time for the Halloween season. I did also say, didn't I, at the beginning of this video, that I would share the prompts for the people using Automatic 11.11. This is the big difference. In Automatic 11.11, none of these pre-made styles are actually available. So what I actually have is in the description down below is a link to this, the Focus Style Reference Sheet. Now, just to be very clear, I did not create this. This was created by somebody else, but it's a fantastic resource. For any of those styles that you like from this video, or if you want to be able to recreate those styles yourself in Automatic 11.11, the prompt and negative prompts from those styles are here. You just need to come into the file, select the cell, control copy, and then control paste it into Automatic 11.11 you'll see that it's marked where the prompt needs to go. So in the case of the one I just did, we had adorable kawaii as the selection. We'll just go here, find it in the list. And here we go, 114 adorable kawaii. You can see the actual prompt is adorable kawaii. Then our prompt, which is graphical t-shirt designer, cute zombie rock star, icon gray background, white space around the design, and then finish off the rest of the prompt with pretty cute, adorable kawaii, and make sure that you put this in the negative prompt. And that is how you will use this over in Stable Diffusion Automatic 11.11. And of course, it is also a great resource for those of you who are going to use Focus, because you can come here and have a look to see exactly what those styles are going to give you. I happen to really like the Art Nouveau style, so let's just use that as our next example. So I've put in the prompt here, graphical t-shirt design of the Eiffel Tower, the word Paris above it, icon gray background, white space around the design. And I will just say one thing, please do be very careful about copyright infringement. Now, Stable Diffusion will create an original image of the Eiffel Tower. However, I'm pretty sure I heard somewhere, maybe I'm wrong, but the Eiffel Tower itself is an actual copyrighted building or something like that. So, look, I'm not a trademark expert, but if you are in doubt, be careful because you don't want to end up getting sued for selling a t-shirt with something on it that you don't have the rights to. And if you remember, we've got the art style set to Art Nouveau, and all of our other settings can stay where they are. And let's generate that. We now have here our Paris Eiffel Tower images. Uh, you probably would have actually changed this grey background to a different colour or something like that. Or, you know, maybe that's fine. But look here, Paris, written down below. It's managed the text actually pretty well. And we've got another design for another t-shirt right here. Now, there are actually a couple of different Lauras that do t-shirt designs, so you can test those out as well. Another one of them here is Defunk. That also can be used to create graphical-looking t-shirt designs. You can always download this one. And if you want to try it, just swap Last for Defunk instead and give it a try. But something else that you can also do is you can add additional Lauras to affect the image as well. For example, you could download Classy Paint XL, which will create an actual oil painting look to your images. Or you could download something like Frank Frazetta SDXL to get a classic fantasy style image, just like this one here on the screen. There are, of course, some anime style ones too. 
and just searching for Anime Excel will bring up all the different checkpoints and the different lures that you can actually make use of. Just be sure that the one you download has this Excel tag on it so that you know it will work with the SDXL checkpoints. And of course, my video wouldn't be complete without me creating some sort of waifu image, right? You probably been waiting for that image, haven't you, you filthy lot? You can also use different checkpoints as well. You don't have to use the SDXL base model. You can, in fact, use different ones. I've got an anime one here called Break Domain XL. And we will change this out for an anime character. There's a couple of other keywords that are really useful here as well. For example, we could write in a circle, and this will actually put our image inside of a circular frame. Or you could use something like in a frame or in a square as well. And I'll go back to styles. I will change it from art style nouveau. Let's try a random one. Let's go with doodle art. And we're going to now generate this. Let's say that this is the image that we want to go with for our t-shirt. The quality is actually pretty good considering that I put it on speed performance mode. However, let's say we want to be able to upscale this even further and have a very large product with this design on it. What we can do is we can actually then click input image. We can just click and drag our image into this box and we can set it to upscale. We can either do it 1.5x, 2x or upscale 2x high fast mode. We're going to be wanting to print this. So let's go with upscale 2x and we'll obviously leave it in more more rather than fast because we want the best quality possible. What we can also do is let's just say that we like some of this, but we maybe feel we could do with a couple of variations. Well, we can either choose very subtle and we'll get some slight changes to it or very strong. Let's go with very strong. We'll leave all our prompt and everything else the same, but with this option selected, we'll just click generate. That's finished. And you can see here the differences there does retain some of the similarities. So you can do this to get some variations on your design. Now let's just say that we really like this design, but maybe we don't like the eyes being orange, or maybe we don't like the actual picture on her t-shirt. What we can go ahead and do is we can use this called in paint or out paint, or we'll just drag the image down to there, drop it in, and then you'll see that your cursor, when you hover it over, turns into this circle. You can control that with this button here by increasing and decreasing the size of it. What we want to do is we want to change our prompt now because we're not doing the whole image. We're just doing those eyes. We're going to change that to anime style blue eyes. And then we're going to generate. And the result of that, well, look, we've now got our anime cat girl with blue eyes. So it works very, very well. And you can tweak and you can tweak elements of the image just like that. You could even take this into here again and change something else instead. But I think I'm pretty happy with this image here. So now I'm going to want to get this ready to actually turn into a t-shirt design. So we're going to actually switch back over to upscale or variation. And we're going to drag this version into the box. We're going to upscale it by two times. And I am going to pop the prompt back in here again. It doesn't have to be exact. We do want to give SDXL just the chance to actually get the upscale right. And we can now generate this image. This is now actually upscaled that original image there. And if we open it in a new tab, you're going to be able to see exactly how much it's upscaled it by. Look at that. We can now zoom in. You've got a lot of detail and a lot of resolution there, which will make printing this really, really easy and very high quality. So with that done, let's actually turn this into a t-shirt. Then I just save this image out to a folder. And just so that you're aware, if you have created some images, but you didn't right click and save them and you're worried about where they are, there is actually a folder for them. You need to go to the root folder of focus, wherever it is you've installed it. Then you'll need to go down to outputs and they are filed by date. And if you click on this date here, you'll get all of the images you've created on that particular day. You can access them here and move them to a folder that you want them to be in so that you can use those designs again later.
So we're going to open up whatever our photo editing software happens to be. For me, it's Photoshop. You may be using something like Photopea online or perhaps something like DIMP. So I'm going to open up my image. And now that's in here. This is the reason why we decided to go with a gray background. I can get the magic wand tool. I can set it to contiguous. I will need to actually activate that layer. But I can select this gray. I can delete it. Deselect. I'll grab the gray in the inside areas as well. I'll delete those. And this bit here, I'm actually going to just turn that into white. This is now prepped and ready for a t-shirt. We're going to just file export, quick export as a PNG. This is why we don't have any other layers apart from the image because we're going to be exporting this image out. And we're going to call this cat girl to print. Now that's done and exported. I'm going to come back into the browser. And this is where, you know, if you've already got an existing shop, you know the process. You're going to go ahead and you're going to upload this to your spread shop or to your Shopify or whichever website it is you're create using to create your merchandise. For the purpose of this video, I created a store on Spreadshop and I've linked that into the channel, which means that you will see these products down below this video. I will be putting all of the images we created in this tutorial as available products. So if you do like what you've seen so far and you appreciate the video, maybe just grab a sticker or something like that will help me out on the channel and also you'll get a pretty cool sticker as a result of it. But you can see here some of the other designs that I've already uploaded. Once you've uploaded the design, it will automatically apply these to the model images. You haven't got to do any of that stuff yourself. And if we want to buy anything, they can just come on here, whatever product they want with the design on it. You can see here, this is one I did in the style of Frank Frazetta. You can put it on different colors and just order it and they'll print it on demand. So it's completely free to create a spread shop. You just need to come into it, go to this tab here for designs, and you're going to upload your design nice and easily. So select Cat Girl to print. We'll open that. It'll take a few seconds to process, and you'll get the products you're able to actually print with this image on. And you can see there on the t-shirt, it actually looks pretty damn amazing. Now, all of these designs from the store are available to buy. I did do this store as an example for the channel for this video. You will see that it is also linked in the description down below. There's actually should be buttons for you to be able to go straight to the store right there via YouTube's shopping experience. Point is, is that you can very quickly and easily create your very own t-shirt designs using SDXL for free on your own computer at home and the results using focus are incredible if you've enjoyed this video please do make sure that you like this video subscribe to the channel to be able to keep up with all the latest tutorials and maybe even buy a sticker of one of the designs that we created during this video from down below and that would be a great way to support the channel and you'll also get a very cool sticker as a result of it and if you guys actually create your own stores and create your own AI art for it, let me know in the comments down below because I'll be sure to check them all out. Until the next time, see you later, prompt engineers.